So we've extended our one-way lighting circuit now to be a two-way lighting circuit. In other words, the two switches behind me control the one lighting point. So we've got two-way control of our lighting point. We're going to carry out the continuity of CPC and polarity test, followed by the insulation resistance, as we did with our one-way lighting circuit. We have the link in the consumer's unit ready for our continuity test. I've also set my uh, MFT up to measure ohms, because we're measuring resistance during the continuity test. And we're going to carry out the continuity of CPC first, and then we're going to include the polarity test at the same time. Once that's completed, all covers will be on, all loads will be removed, and we'll go on to the insulation resistance test. So I've set up my instrument as I suggested in my continuity of CPC and polarity of my one-way lighting circuits. I've removed the resistance of the leads on the tester, and I've confirmed and removed the resistance of the link. The link is in place, and we're going to measure every point on our radial circuit for continuity of CPC, and we're going to prove polarity at every lighting point. We have only one lighting point, but this time we have two switches that need continuity proving at them. During the polarity test, we will operate first, second, first, second switches, seeing full-scale deflection of our instrument, proving that the circuit will go open and closed or on and off at the lighting point, leaving it in the on position for the insulation resistance test that comes later on. Logic suggests to us that this is the furthest point on our radial circuit. However, it isn't. It's still the lighting point. If we think and follow through the path of the line conductor, we take the line conductor from the consumer's unit and it comes into the centre loop termination. From the centre loop termination, we bring it down to the switch. From the switch, it goes through the three core to the other switch. And then obviously from the other switch back round to the switching line that turns on the lamp itself. So even though it looks as if the lighting point is closer to the consumer unit, the amount of cable through the switching, so in other words, down through the common and strappers and back round again, means the lighting point is the furthest point on this radial circuit, and we should achieve our highest reading at this point. However, we will record the highest reading wherever we achieve it, whether it be at one of the switches or at the lighting point, but logic says the maximum amount of cable on the switching line conductor and CPC is actually at the lighting point. So first of all, I'm going to do the lighting point. I'm going to connect onto the earthing terminal within the lighting point where the CPCs are connected and the switching line conductor so we can prove polarity at the same time. The instrument itself has been zeroed and hopefully we get a realistic reading as we do the test. So at the minute I've got 0.38 of an ohms and the circuit is recording a reading, therefore we're in the on position. In other words, the switch is closed. Let's prove polarity at the same time. So our instrument now has gone to an infinite reading or open circuit, a full scale deflection from a reading to no reading. We go to the second switch. Our circuit has come back on. And we've got a slightly different reading now of 0 0.2 of an ohm. The switches at college hardly get used, so as we open and close the switch blades, we can see a slight variation in the resistance. So back to the first switch, and we should see it go off. And we have, and then we'll go back again to the second switch. And we have got a settled down reading of 0 0.21 ohms. At the moment, that's our highest reading because it's the only one we've taken. We need to remember that reading because we're now going to do a continuity test at each of the switches and record the highest reading wherever we achieve it. We will leave the switches in the on position because the insulation resistance test that comes later on requires all switches to be left on. So next we need to prove continuity of the CPC at the switch itself. Probe it onto the earth terminal in the back and one of the terminals within the two-way switch. I get a reading of 0.19 of an ohm. I don't need to operate the switch at this stage. The switch needs to be operated when you're proving polarity of the lighting point itself and not when you're proving continuity of the CPC at the switch. Move over to the second switch. Again, probe onto the earthing terminal and one of the terminals within the actual switch itself. I've got 0 0.22 of an ohm. Of all the readings I get, I'll record the highest one. Logic says that should be at the lighting point itself. However, we do record the highest one wherever we get it in circuit. We can record that reading now for continuity of CPC under our box heading R1 plus R2. R1 representing the continuity of the line conductor. R2 representing the continuity of the CPC. We can also now tick the box for polarity. We've proved that both these switches turn on and off the lighting point above. We've left it in the on position. We need to put the covers back on so we can start the insulation resistance test next. 
So all the covers have gone on, all the loads have been removed. In this case, there is no lamp in circuit. I've also turned off, as before, the circuit breaker and the RCCB, because the RCCB contains electronic components, and we do not want to pass 500 volts DC through that. We've also got the earthing conductor in the tails connected to the supply authority's incoming earth. However, we have an isolated board, so the supply is not live into the distribution board or consumer's unit itself, and we're now ready to carry out the insulation resistance test. So my instruments have been set up as I did and showed you in the insulation resistance test of our one-way lighting circuit. So I've set it into the mega ohm scale and at 500 volts for a single phase installation. And it doesn't matter which sequence in which we do this test. So I'm gonna clip on first of all to the earth bar. And I'm then going to go on to the top of the circuit breaker itself, trying to keep my hands out of the way. And if I press the test button now, our reading is greater than the machine can read. So we've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. Take off and probe on now to my neutral bar, so between the earth and neutral bar. I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. And finally, I'm going to test between the neutral bar and the top of the circuit breaker itself. And again, press and test the button. And I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. However, for this installation, that is not the test completed. In this installation, we have two-way switching, so there's a slight spin on the test itself. So we've completed the insulation resistance test exactly the same as we did when we did our one-way lighting circuit. However, it is not complete at this stage. We need to walk into the installation and go to the two-way switches wherever they are throughout the installation. We've got a set, um, one set of two-way switches in this case. So what we have to do is throw them into the opposite on position. Think of it at the moment, the line conductor comes up to the loop terminal comes down to the switch and it comes through, say, the brown strapper. Through, black common, back round and, say, turns on the light. It means the grey strapper hasn't been tested for insulation resistance. We've only tested the black and the brown within the three core. To test the grey strapper, we need to throw it into the opposite on position. That goes off, that goes on. The circuit line now comes up into the loop terminal, down on our twin brown, now down the grey strapper, through round the black common, and turns on our light fitting. So we repeat the insulation resistance test at the distribution board or consumer's unit again for the second time. So you walk around the installation, throwing all the two-way switches into the opposite on position, return to the disc board, and repeat the insulation resistance test. So let's repeat the insulation resistance test. So I've walked around my installation and I've thrown the two-way switches into the opposite on position. I've now returned to the distribution board or consumer's unit and I'm going to repeat the insulation resistance test again for that circuit. So onto the earth bar, onto the line bar and press the test button. We've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. I go onto the neutral bar. I repeat the test again. I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. I move my crocodile clip onto my neutral bar and I repeat the test for the final time between line and neutral. And I've got a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. Now I've completed the insulation resistance test on this lighting circuit because I've done it with the two-way switches in both on positions. Therefore, the insulation resistance has got both strappers that are in circuit tested. So if we'd have only done it once, you'd have only tested the insulation resistance of one strapper. By throwing both two-way switches back into the on position, we've completed the insulation resistance because the other strapper was in circuit on the second insulation resistance test.